For impatient people that want a risky shortcut, it takes 9 driving days to get to Canada rather than the default 15 days. Be careful, this means less days to prepare for the inn. Alright, we're doing short trip to heck mode on Death Row to Canada. Welcome back to Death Row to Canada. And once again, they don't even show the loading screen with the skeleton. Hmm. Anyway. Time to mystery his rumors that Canada is a safe place for the zombie threats, with nothing game from running around in Florida, that he lies ready to death row and travel north. Dogs are very fast. For fun. Try having a dog solo loot in a city as everyone rests. I think I did that once before and it said, nope, can't do it. Perhaps the word super train should be in there somewhere. Conflicting tip. To start the journey, John Mess Press decides to grab some supplies from a nearby location. In order to survive the death road, you'll need to hoard as many supplies as you can. You also need to find ways to train and grow your team. I find a rest stop along the road. It looks very quiet from the outside. Mild, calm, morning. That's right, we are taking a risky shortcut today. Or well, at least in the course of 10 days. In game days. However, you guys want to see it. Not good enough, just a spot. No toilets to boot. At least I'm getting the shotgun. Well, at least no toilets to loot in this room. Let's check out the other, shall we? Be sure to get that vending machine on the way out. And I'll get it now before I forget. Can't say no to food. Uh, nope, all open. Alright, let's go. Nice and quick. Eleven food, three meds, sixteen bullets, five shells, three zombies destroyed. John Nice Fair's camps for the night. Off a quiet stretch of the road. Eats a decent meal. In the morning, there's a moose outside the camp. It looks injured, and it's just glaring at John S. Perez. Even injured, a moose is a really powerful creature. Probably best not to mess with it. No med skills. No strength. No shooting skills. I leave Moose alone. Jonas Prize drives to a city as it starts to get dark. Try not lose track of time. Things can get bad after the sun sets. Sparse, sluggish, near sunset. And I find coffee shop. Evening coffee, huh? Well, some people may enjoy their coffee at midnight for all we know. This enormous and complex coffee machine was built to survive a few different kinds of ends of the world scenarios. This is a big part of this coffee shop's marketing campaign. Truth and advertising, it still works. Spray some coffee into an old cup lying around, then drinks it. He feels all coffeeed up! I'm faster. I'm not strong enough to the table. How about this one? Nope. Alright, that's fine. Super fast. strength increase and stuff, so once I leave the area, it's gone. Also, one cup per person, okay? Drink too much, you'll get sick.
rifle round. Junk. Ah, here we go. I'll take that. I'll take this. Buildings. It's a pet supply. Alright, that's it. Let's go. In you go. Rome. Ten, two, two gas, two meds, twelve bullets, eight rounds, nine shells. Let's roll. Eleven zombies destroyed. A fast and fancy car pulls up to you dramatically. The driver shouts from his window. On the death road, the only way to survive is to be fast and also furious. He challenges you to a drag race. My car speed is average. Before the drag race can start, Jonathan Perez plows his car into the opponent's car. Both cars take damage, but the opponent's vehicle takes a lot more. You win the race. The annoying driver runs away, screaming, Cheater! John M. Express siphons some gas from his wreckage. Hey look, my morale increased. And would you challenge someone at a drag race in a zombocalypse? You got a fast enough car, maybe. But I don't. I'm average. It's important to keep set rations to conserve our supplies. It's really time to camp, but there's been a lot of signs of badness today. Someone needs to be awake in case of an attack. Travis Perez stands guard for the night. He manages to stay awake, but feels pretty bad in the morning. Well, there goes that morale from the wreck, Didge. But hey, max loyalty. Love it. While scavenging, John Mess Perez runs to a man covered in cardboard boxes. He says he's been stuck there for days. He has a rifle lying on the ground outside of his reach. I'm gonna help him up. I saved the man from all the cardboard boxes, pinning him down. He can't spare a ward, but is very grateful. Don't worry, him being okay is enough to increase my morale. I don't steal. I have six good weapons. No wonder Canada is doing fine. Outside of Canada, most society and civilization has been destroyed. You can still find people engaging in trade, with preserved food being the new currency. Particularly intense woman offers to sell you a spare weapon. I could only carry the best stuff. She starts her chainsaw and revs it a few times, emphasizing this. Talks to a meek-looking woman. Talks to a meek-looking woman. She invites you to check out her collection of rifles. I found so many that I'm looking to sell some. Get more and more reasons why I rarely speak. I just cannot read. This trader is waving a sturdy military flashlight around. It's a whole business trick to draw on customers. It pays to be this prepared. Can of healing spray. Spray someone to heal them. You can spray yourself by walking into the healing cloud. In emergencies, you can also melt zombies with it. I think that's all I'm gonna get. And we're off. John Fred is about to break into a small fortified grocery store, but then finds Phyllis already living inside. She seems like a calm, clever person. Sure. Sure, I'll join. I was running out of food anyway. Phyllis is now part of the team. Phyllis brings along some food supplies. Bonus! Onward to Canada! Plus six food. Wits and composure are great. Phyllis judges her character. Attitude, terrible. Loyalty, middle. I always have to get every recruit unless we have lots of food. The group is about to explore a small house when they notice a horde creeping nearby. The group will have to hold their ground for a bit before they can escape. Siege alert, there's no escape. I'm 
put in the shotgun just in case. Alright, let's do this. Oh, that's right, I'm tired because I had to stay up on watch. I can't pick up the chairs. It's fine. It's fine. Because I brought shotgun. My aim's terrible, however. And since I'm tired, it's probably much worse. over, you can now try to escape. As soon as there's an opening, I'll go for it. Alright, let's go. Boy. Throwing furniture at zombies seems pretty effective. The group feels inspired after managing to survive that situation. They feel like they are getting the hang of this. Strike, please. Even in the post-apocalypse, it is still possible to get swole. Phyllis is strong. Average strong. Me? Well, I'm tired right now. The group counts out in a sturdy building. It seems to be an old repair shop with busted machinery laying around. This would be a great time to train with repairing things, but that would make a lot of noise. I need rest. Shop placement is crucial for making our ammo last. I'm trying to have that throw to good size to make a stop for supplies. Okay, before I go in here, let me check my things. Let's see. We only have one shotgun. With four shells. And these are pretty crowded, so... You guys may yell at me in the comment section, but I am not prepared for something like that, so I'm going to the riled up apartment here. The group spots an apartment with agitated zombies shambling nearby. Oh jeez, they're mega cheesed. They may be angry for no reason, as there's no signs of anyone anywhere else. Anyone else there. Maybe I should have gone to the labs. Okay, first of all, we're not keeping this piece of wood. Second, she's stronger, so I'll take over her and make use of some heavy furniture living. This can throw. And Eight bullets. Ten bullets. I only got a gun for that. That's not a shotgun. Yes, I already got one. Hmm, I got a ride. Too bad I went off beat. Look, I have reasons to decline flashing events. That's probably because you're prepared for it. If you saw a good flashing event and you didn't have much to work with, would you go still go through with it? I also look at car chassis too, if it's one of those you pull up in a car. Anyway, Phyllis finds a magazine in good condition among the ruined magazines and books. The magazine's titled is Cool Running. She stuffs it into her pack. Pipe bomb. That's gonna help. Good. The 
Shark now has the magazine Cool Running. Who gets to read it? She gets to read Cool Running. She absorbs the content. Sadly, she ruins the magazine for others due to their grimy fingers. The zombies have an awful lot of trouble with closed doors. The group finds a radio station. The broadcasting equipment is hooked up to a gas generator with a small amount of fuel left. There's enough power to get out one message to anyone that may hear it. John Spurs broadcasts a short impromptu talk show that is a crash course in car repair. It's informative and entertaining. Maybe this can help someone. It helps me. A bee flies into the car, even with the window open. It doesn't leave. It keeps flying right into the group's faces. It could be the best challenge yet. Oi. Well, my car's about to break down, and, uh... I don't have much gas left, so... Oh, now it's just gone. The group descends into a panic. The car loses control, and then plows into a tree. Car destroyed. The car got through, but took too much damage. It fell apart a short distance down the road. At some point, the bee escaped through the window. Man, I hate the bees. Without a car, the group is sitting duck for bandits. The group is ambushed by awkward bandits that apologize for the robbery. They are likely new at this. They demand nine food to pass safely. Phyllis expected this. Phyllis for Shaw an ambush, so she set up her plans shortly before the bandits appeared. When the bandits make their demands of Phyllis, Johnny Vesperez sneaks behind them in a counter ambush. They are surprised by this and surrender. The group decides to set up camp for the night and try to eat a meal. The group spots a bakery van that has broken down on the side of the road. The van is irreparable, the bread is moldy and inedible, but there are some sugary cakes that are still good. The group is walking through the countryside and stumbles on burnt out cars with zombies roaming around them. This is a good opportunity to check if one of the cars still work. Moderate hunting morning. Investigate the cars. I'll handle this one solo. Where did I get a femur? Nobody wants a femur. Going through. Oh boy. Almost got ambushed. I Sometimes it's worth it to run past a horde instead of fighting. After a long drive, the group finds a safe place to camp. The night passes through with no incidents. The group eats a decent meal. You, the group continues making progress along the death road. As long as one person remains alive, the Dream of Canada lives on. Unexpectedly, the group finds someone they can trade with. Uh, let's see. Ron is tired of being stuck at this camp. She will join you for a small fee of five food. Ron claims to be really strong. She boasts about being a former cage pit death fight fighter. Man, how did I have trouble reading that? Phyllis has a very bad feeling about this person. Yeah, no, no room for liars in this group. The group finds a dog surrounded by a bunch of ammo. The dog speaks, Welcome to Ammo Emporium. Everything must go. It offers 5 bullets, 4 rifle ammo, and 3 shotgun shells per food item. If I had more food, I'd go get more. The group finds a woman surrounded by medical equipment. She claims to be a skilled doctor. She offers to provide health care in exchange for food. We're all fully healed, so I'm fine. The rifle wielding woman claims she used to train others in competitive shooting. She is selling tips for keeping your aim steady and multiple targets trick shots.
Zombies are slow moving targets. It's real easy. You can make it to Canada? That's horse trash! And he's the guy who offers food for gas. Who's at almost every trader camp. I'm driving on the death road. The group decides to make a stop for supplies. Uh, let's check out the small suburb. The group drives through a ruined suburb. There's a few buildings that look like they haven't been completely trashed. Mild, irritated, near noon. Nice and light. Also nice and light. Take the lead again as you're stronger. Something glinting between the cameras there, but unfortunately, whatever it is, I can't get it unless I spend time breaking this. Alright. Whatever it is, I want it. We'll, we'll take turns. guy pick up another piece of wood. Oh, here we go. Nightstick. Let's face some... There. Junk. Furniture and use it to bulldoze the zombies out of the way. Example of bulldozing him out of the way. Mm -hmm. 
As the group explores a campsite, they are ambushed by bandits. They brandish makeshift weapons. They demand all of your weapons. This is ludicrous. Not even bandits will usually do this, as it's a slow but sure death sentence. Phyllis, come to the rescue. Phyllis felt suspicious about the campsite, so she wanted to wait near the car. As John and Perez is being robbed, the car barrels through the campsite, plows over the tents, and then stops. The bandits are freaked out, so they flee. Thank you. The group finds a large campsite that is occupied by a few carloads of other survivors. Camping with strangers is risky, but there's nowhere else to go. Then they're heading to Canada. Yeah, I don't trust him. Phyllis does not trust anyone in the camp. She stays up all night watching for any signs of trouble. Nothing happens, and she is exhausted in the morning. The group eats a decent meal. Suddenly, a giant fissure erupts across the road ahead. It's big. Super big. The asphalt buckles on either side, making for a pretty sick ramp. My car speed is fast, so... Phyllis grabs the wheel and pounds the gas pedal. The car bolts forward, ripping a howling screech into the sky. The car built up great speed, hits the jump, and sails right over the obstacle. Super fast car. From Brooklyn. It has started to rain over this city. The zombies become more aggressive as a response for reasons that have not yet been explained. Mild, irritated, near new. So what do I need more? I only have the one gun, huh? So. Alright, I'll let Phyllis rest if she uh, watch for any untrustworthy campers, I guess. And I'll head solo with my nightstick. Take that. Respect my authority. Uh, Nothing. Something. Nope, it's junk. Yet still something. Junk. Hey! No touchy. Here we go. Opening that? Nope, I'm breaking it. No, actually, the zombie broke it.
Oh my. Watch me, you gotta get to that flag. Okay. Two things that are good. I got root. Nope, 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 nope. Ah, I wanted to close the door. Maybe they broke it. There. Oh, yeah, see, here we go. Shotgun. Failed to pick up. There we go. That's a dead end in there. 